So let's look at problem two. And problem two states, a function f is defined by f of x equals to the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the power of 2n minus one, and then all divided by x to the power of 2n plus one. And we're asked, where is f continuous? All right, so let's take a look at the solution. So what we could do is use the problem solving strategy of taking uh, cases and uh, basically look at key cases. And here notice that there's a plus one, minus one. So let's just see what happens when x is, well, uh, absolute value of x is less than one. So this case i right here and make this space. All right, so if we have uh, the absolute value of x is less than one, this better like that. Yes, yeah, so if we have that, then then what we're going to have is well the absolute value of x uh, x squared because we're dealing with a squared right there. See how it looks like. So when you square this, this is going to be well less than one. Yeah, because for example, 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 that's going to be uh, 0 0.8. Uh, one. So when you're multiplying it less than one, you're always going to be less than one. And it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. Because you're squaring it, it's always going to be positive. So that is where this is between. And then what we have here is when this is between, this is less than one here and it's greater than or equal to zero. Uh, what we have is a limit as n. The n approaches infinity of uh, x to the uh, 2n square, um, yeah, 2n, yeah, 2n, or uh, more, com uh, just more uh, clear, just put it x squared power of n, and this equals to limit as n approaches infinity of x 2n. Uh, this equals to zero, this is from my earlier video, and I'll just put this in bracket and we'll reference it soon. So uh, this is from my earlier, yeah, earlier video just added that there. So thus what we have is thus, yeah, so thus, let's put this better. Yeah, so thus if we put this all together, what we have is f of x. So if we go back to f of x, this equals to here limit as n approaches infinity of this, and we could uh, break that all down. So limit uh, f x equals to the um, yeah, the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the 2n minus 1 over x to the 2n plus 1. And this means, well, we're going to have a scenario such that uh, this will be yeah equal to, well, the top part's going to be 0 because we have it over here, 0 minus 1, and then bottom part 0 plus 1. So this equals to negative 1. So we have negative 1 there. That's the limit when x is, a oh, absolute value of x is less than one there. All right. All right, uh, now before we get to the next case, just a recall from my earlier video. Uh, this is a, from over here, my earlier video over here. So the number this is limit as n approaches infinity of x squared power of n, or just x to the two n. So recall from this video here is a link and screenshot just from my <laughs> calculus book. So the sequence uh, r power of n is convergent if, uh, if the uh, yeah if r is less than or equal to one and greater than uh, or, yeah, and greater than negative one yeah and it's uh, divergent for all other values of r so you have a limit as n approaches infinity of r to the power of n equals zero if uh, if r is uh, is greater than um, yes if r is greater than negative one and less than one and it's uh, equal to one if r equals to one. So yeah, that's the scenario. And in our case here, this x to the n is less than one. And it's also greater than uh, or equal to negative one, in this case, zero. So that's gonna be zero. So this is our case. So this is our case right there, where r is x to the power of two. All right, so now let's take a look at the second case, so case i, i, or case two. This is where absolute value of x is equal to one. So let's write this down. If absolute value of x is equal to one, yeah, so if it's equal to one, then what we'll have is, well, this is just the same thing as writing x is equal to plus or minus one, and the absolute value of that is just gonna be the positive, like that. And uh, what this means is, well, then, 
the x squared is equal to plus or minus one squared, which equals to one, like that. And uh, yeah, if it's equal to one, well, this obviously just means, well, this case right here, uh, and that you can see that already, uh, limit as n approaches infinity of x to the two n, uh, well, this just equals to limit as x approaches infinity of x to the two n. <laughs> so this is gonna be equal to well limit as, yeah, that's just gonna be one power n. Uh, and yeah, so right here is gonna be one to the n, one to the infinity, that's still gonna be one. Or just better yet, yet I'll write up above here. So this equals to well, uh, one to the infinity and that just approaches one. So in other words, this equals to one as per this case right there. So that equals to one. So thus what we have is thus, uh, that's what we have is f of x is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the uh, 2n minus one over x to the 2n plus one. So this equals to one minus one over uh, one plus one. And there's the x to the 2n is just equals to one. So this equals to zero over one equals to zero like that. All right, and now let's take a look at the, the next case, case three, the last case is where absolute value of x is greater than one. So if we have that, uh, so let's write this down. So if the absolute value of x is greater than one, like this, yeah, so if it's that, then what, what this means is, well, when we square x squared, it's gonna be greater than one times by greater than one, this is gonna be greater than one as well. Yeah, and if it's greater than one, then what we'll have is limit as n approaches infinity of uh, x squared power of n. Again, I should, I should put that just for clarity, uh, just to match up with our earlier video, x to the two n, this is goes to infinity, so it diverges. Yeah, so it's diverges over here, divergent for all values of r there, that is, uh, that's greater than, the absolute value is greater than, yeah, than one. So in our case, r is x squared, and that's gonna be greater than one, so it's gonna diverge, and you can also see it. When you have a greater than one you, to the power of infinity, that just goes to infinity. So that's what we have, thus we could put, uh, put this in our, in our function, so thus fx equals to, limit as n approaches infinity of x to the 2n minus one over x to the 2n plus one, because now instead of, because here we're dealing with infinity over infinity, what we do instead is multiply the top and bottom by x to the 2n, one over x to the 2n, so then we'll have a bunch of cancellations, so this equals to limit as n approaches infinity, and then this is gonna cancel there, we're gonna get a one minus one over x to the two n divided by, and this is gonna be one plus one over x to the two n, like that. And in both of these scenarios right here, uh, and the top one, we have a one over, well, infinity, and this is gonna be one over x to the two n as approaches infinity, uh, so we're gonna have a one over infinity, which equals two, well, zero. So in other words, uh, this whole thing equals two, one minus zero over, uh, one plus zero, which equals to one. All right, and now uh, putting it all together, we have, let's just uh, put this in a giant function, f of x is equal to, put it like that. Yeah, so it's equal to, so let's look at the scenario, so absolute value of x is greater than one. In other words, it, yeah, and that equals to one here. So it equals to one if, yeah, if x is less than negative one. And then it's also gonna be, well, equals to one if x is greater than uh, greater than one. So the absolute value is, uh, is greater than one. And yes, that's what we have there. And then let's go back above here. So when it equals to one, uh, yeah, when absolute value equals to one, in other words, x equals plus or minus one, we have it, this equals to zero. So it equals to zero if x equals negative one, and it equals to zero if x equals to uh, plus one, like that. I'll just, I'll just put it uh, one. And then the next setup is, right, this is neater one. The next one is in between there, so when absolute value of x is 
uh, less than one. In other words, it x is between negative one and one. This equals to negative one. So we have one, zero, and then we have it at negative one if, uh, if x is between uh, one and greater than negative one. And then if you were to graph this out, so let's graph this out like here. This equals to, this is the x, this is the y. So there is our uh, key points is at one. So at plus or minus one, they're both at zero. So let's put a dot here. This is at one. And then the other side is at negative one. And uh, in between it's at negative uh, one right here. Just put it like this. This is at negative one, like this. And uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, open circle there. It's not filled in because it doesn't equal equal negative one over there. It equals a one over here. So it's an open interval. It's a closed interval right here, that spot. And then above it, oh, so right one right here is passed when absolute value of x is greater than one. Let's put a circle and it keeps going. And put a circle and it keeps going. So that's how it looks like. Notice it. So it's basically continuous everywhere here. And everywhere in between, except the head, and then everywhere past one. So it's continuous everywhere except negative one and one. All right, here, so I just added it here. So the graph shows that f is continuous everywhere except at plus or minus one, at x equals to plus or minus one right there.